That's called the icebreaker. So uh, behind me is a term called Mr. Klasrumichov, tear down this wall. Now, if you're unfamiliar with what Klasrumichov means, we'll figure that out during the day. Now, sadly, this is only a webinar. I have 18 minutes or less. So if I go over, I'm into Josh's time, which is good. <laughs> so behind me now are those bricks to a wall. And what I need is something that I don't think gets done a lot at TED, and that's audience participation. So repeat these four words after me, if you will. Tear down this wall. On the count of three. One, two, three. Tear down this wall. When you see this slide pop up again, in unison, I'd like you to help me out and to reiterate those four words for me. Tear down this wall. Because I'm an educator. I'm an educator, I think, taking a bite out of this apple, from the K-12 space for four years, the higher ed space for five years, and since, I guess, 2002, the corporate world blasted those folks with revenue and profits. Yes, I'm part of that for the past eight years. But you know what? Whether I've sat in K-12, or been part of higher ed, or been in this corporate world, I have a problem, and a problem that goes with this quote. And that is, the greatest danger for most of us is not that our aim is too high and we miss it, but that it's too low and we reach it. And that was Michelangelo, who too said, I am still learning. Now, why do I bring this up? I bring this up because I have somewhat of a problem. I have a problem not just as an educator, because of what's transpired over the last, oh, I don't know, a thousand years. I have a problem as well because I have this at home. This is seven-year-old, a five-year-old, and a three-year-old, otherwise known with my beloved Denise and I as the goat rodeo. <laughs> now, the goats at home are having a pretty good time. Denise is an educator. I'm an educator. So it's a Petri dish of education panacea. But. In uh, 9, 11, and 13 years, respectively, what's going to happen? They're going to enter high school. And that is where I have a problem. So I speak to all the parents and grandparents and uncles and aunts out there as well today, because this is where it starts for me. Emblematically, this is what? This is the Berlin, Ber Berlin Wall, otherwise for me known as the Berlining Wall. We've put walls up everywhere, and I'm tired of it, and I'm here today to talk a bit about that history and then to offer a solution. Heck, TED is about ideas worth spreading, isn't it? So it may, came back to this several many, many moons ago, the single room schoolhouse. We needed it. It's kind of past its time, but let's just look back inside of those walls. We had the beginnings of Sage on the Stage. At that stage was the pulpit, the preacher, the teacher, espousing virtues that he or she had to the class. And backed by what? Technology, the blackboard. So then we said, all right, we can evolve, no problem. And through mass industrial revolution-esque ideas, what happened? We turned those, that classroom story into classrooms in a school. And sure, we decided to put maps on the walls. We actually had colored chalk. And the kids were so obedient. And then we said, oh, color. The wooden desks over here, they turned into plastic blue desks. And hark, intercom. And blackboard turned to whiteboard. And look, that's an LCD projector. And somewhere in there, I see that the teacher has a computer. Now that's evolution, but we're still walled. And then lastly, I bring you to recent day, particularly K-12, where yes, we've got computers and tablets and anything with an eye in front of it. <laughs> but that's still evolution, but what's happening is the systemic issue. And that is we're still in walls. Now, point your attention to 1,000 years ago. The University of Bologna, a cathedral-like palace in which higher education was born, where masses and masses of students would go into the lecture halls. And the lecture halls were filled with preachers. And the preachers would say, I know this. Please take that, impart yourself, and do good. 
And a thousand years later, we do it in color. <laughs> Is this evolution? No. Tear down this wall. All right. So what's happened is we have basically disaffected, bored kids, whether female or male, in the K-12 space. Theory after theory after theory inside of a walled classroom. And then those high school kids, man, they're crazy. They've got devices and they're tweeting and they're texting and I, I'm still in a wall, help me teach. But you know, I'm apathetic right now and I need some help. And then, and then the higher ed kids are like, okay, just kill me. Tear down this wall. Because, funny thing happened on the way to the market. Uh, we created fire, and then we said, well, you know what, we gotta keep adding wood here. So maybe we'll get some wax and a, some sort of um, flint, and you know, we'll have a candle. And then someone came up with a great idea with electricity, and thus born the light bulb. And then someone said, you know, damn it, we're never gonna invent a better light bulb. <gasps> we did, we invented a CFL. Now is that progress, is that evolution? It sure is, isn't it? But what do we do in the education space? We stay in a wall, we stay in that desk, and we say that's education. I have a problem with that, folks, not just because I'm an educator, because remember, I got a goat at home, three of them, and they're grazing like mad. And you know what, I wanna take one moment to say, look, for all of you educators out there, K-12, higher ed, or corporate learning, those of you that are using technology in the classroom or looking to break down those walls, you are our angels, you're our beacons of hope. You are our Michelangelos. And I wanna take you up and cuddle you and give you hugs and say, how do I make this happen systemically across the continuum from K-12 to higher ed to corporate learning? I want to do that, but I've got a problem. Tear down this wall. Here's my problem. You see, because of those walls, we teach to the subject. So not so much in elementary school, let's just leave that for a second, but particularly in high school. So we herd our cats from class to class teaching a subject, and we never connect dots. And sure, we've got great teachers that are teaching chemistry and English and biology, and they're using technology in that class, but how do you connect the dots for them? How do you relate physics to chemistry, to English, to science, to math, to the real world? And that happens as well in university, in colleges, in institutes of technology. We teach to the subject because the subject predicates the need for an exam, and the exam predicates the need for a transcript, and then corporate wakes up and says, well, uh, can you write? Can you, can you collaborate with Lucy? Do you have critical thinking skills? Can you problem solve? I'm glad you can use the technology, but I need some innovation. I need some courage. I need some ingenuity. I don't just need to know that you can solve formulas. I don't need to know that you can tell me when the Battle of 1812 happened. <laughs> that was funny. <laughs> Make myself laugh sometimes. But see, here we go, 1928, a report card. 1928 graded at the subject level. 2008, graded at the subject level. And higher education is no better, graded at the subject level. I have a problem, folks. Down Thank you. All right, so let's start talking about the continuum and then the solution. And then I'll feel the cane and get pulled off of this TED stage. So here's the school, it's K-12, right? So teaching subjects, teachers wanting to break out of that confinement, looking to do something good, but the establishment is a cartel. Yes, I said a cartel. We have issues here. We have issues between the unions. We have issues between state, provincial curriculas, local school boards, because we're dictating curriculum that has to be predicated usually by a textbook. Wrong. Then we go off to university, colleges, or institutes of technology, the same thing happens. Academic senates, et cetera, say we must be teaching this, and then good professors are trying to break out of that. We've heard several today, thank you, Paul. But you know what? It's the same old systemic problem. We heard Elisa, she's bored to death. Now, we go to New York, and New York says, ah, there's a way we can make money out of this. I'm called a publisher. <laughs> 
And now, I believe in profit, don't get me wrong, but the publishers then have these curricula textbooks that all of the K-12 environments and the universities and higher eds, they all get. So there's this vicious cycle, and no one can break it. But guess what happens, kids? Because at the end of the day, where I live now for the last eight years, the corporate world is now the real world. And the real world is asking for not just your theoretical marks, they're asking, can you collaborate? Can you work together? Can you have problems? Do you have problem solving abilities? Can you critically think? Are you innovative? Can you connect dots between the subjects? So it's rhetorical. Hence, my theory is that learning equals work and work equals learning. How we learn in K-12, how we learn in higher ed is moving societally towards how we're working much more collaboratively. And I think that's where we need to start breaking down the wall. So other than the fat feet, I recommend to you the 50-50 DNA model. It's as follows. First of all, 50% of the time in high school, I want the theory reinforced. Math, science, curriculum, the arts, et cetera. 50% of the time, think eight to 12. Have a lunch. And then from one to four, I want there to be real world applicability happening every day. The connection of those dots cross-subject, multidisciplinary action between teachers for kids to get them ready for either the real world or higher ed. And that means that in higher ed, when we're asking for high school transcripts, we're asking for two things, 50% marks, 50% behavior. Or is this kid collaborating? Is this kid critically thinking? Can he or she problem solve? 50-50 to admit kids into higher ed. Thirdly then, I'm going to take a hammer to the Bachelor of Education programs. And the reason being is we keep teaching the same antiquated way. The only way to fix K-12 is to start, not only in some of the things I've talked about today, but in the B-Ed. And the B-Ed has to start waking up and saying, how might I teach theory plus real world? How can I involve the community and all those leaders out there that do want to make change, that want to be involved in the learning process? Then, higher ed, you change too. I want you to have 50% theory and 50% application. I want professors to work together. I want them to come up with the answers to the solutions of tomorrow together. I want to see spin-offs out of universities. I do, but you can't do that just sitting in a subject, going from class to class, and boring the hell out of Elisa. We can't do that. And lastly, when you graduate from now on, I want a 50-50 transcript. I want 50% mark, and I want 50% assessment on how well I did do those critical thinking, problem solving, real world skills. Because guess what kids, the money, the world does revolve around money, I'm sorry, it does. And real world is asking for real world solutions to real, with real world people that have those actionable skills to critically think, to be able after nine years, five years in high school and four years in higher ed, to step into the real world and say, this is how I'm going to make money. This is how I'm going to make society better. This is how I'm going to involve my community. It's about this, and I sure hope that you believe that. Because if we do, uh, sorry, in the 50-50 DNA model uh, uh, summary, so we're going to decommission the learning environment. So it's 50-50 going forward, higher ed and high school. New 50-50 admission standards. From, uh, from high school into higher ed, and a new 50-50 B-Ed model, Bachelors of Education. And lastly, the A, actualize 50-50 higher ed final transcripts. So that when you're graduated, you've got this 50-50 model, and again, ideally, corporate world is saying, okay, now I understand that you're both smart theoretically and you're smart collaboratively. Okay, so if you do that, then ultimately I think that the Berlin, <laughs> the Berlin Wall falls. Thus, our learning wall falls. And no longer will you have to say, tear down this wall. The wall will be torn down. And it's kind of simple. I'm not telling you to, uh, to um, eradicate all of the problems that we have today in schools. I'm not saying to uh, knock down the schools, whether it's uh, higher ed or whether it's K-12. I'm really saying to you, let's just rethink the model with what we've got. We still need theory. Not knocking all those publishers. We still need some curricula. But if we're able to apply that in cross-collaborative ways at the K-12 environment and in higher ed, I truly and fundamentally believe that we will have solved this crisis that is looming for my three, five, and seven-year-old and many folks in this audience. So Chris Anderson said this, and I'll just uh, 
I'll end on this. You're part of the crowd that may be about to launch the biggest learning cycle in human history. If you agree with me, then we'll have torn down those walls. With that, I thank you.